Welcome to episode 145 of Film Courage. My name is Karen Warden. My name is David Brandon. In case you're wondering, those sweet sounds are coming from the guitar of our guy, Kevin Gant. And, um, you know, we couldn't be more grateful to have Mr. Kevin Gant in the studio with us for our Christmas show. And he, he's taking this all in. He he's is. breathing it he in. Yeah. Kevin Gant is a world guitar poet and star of Jay Duplass's documentary, of course, named Kevin. Kevin. Jay Duplass raised over $16,000 this year for his Kickstarter campaign for Kevin. On the campaign page, Jay Duplass writes, Who is Kevin Gant? In Austin, Texas, in the early 90s, Kevin was my hero. He was the purest, most inspired artist I had ever seen. His fusion of all-American folk poetry with a wild flamingo guitar style was completely original, and I went to every show of his that I could. But in 1995, Kevin disappeared completely from the music scene, and I had no idea why. Two years ago, I finally tracked him down, and we began a friendship. I learned about, his, about the painful events back in 1995 that shattered his lifelong dream of making and sharing music. I learned he had barely touched his guitar ever since and forgotten how to play almost all of his songs. But then thanks to a magical twist of fate I could have never imagined, Kevin and I found ourselves traveling halfway around the globe and back and along the way I watched as Kevin's dream reignited right before my eyes. Kevin, my documentary debut, is that story. It's time to introduce world guitar poet Kevin Gant. Hello. Merry how Christmas. You, how are you guys doing? Thank oh, you so much. We're doing nice great. And close to that mic. We're doing great. We want to hear. We want to hear the vo- the voice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, everyone in Los Angeles and on the internet and everywhere. Thanks for listening. We have four ways for you to get your Christmas love out to us today: Facebook and Twitter at Film Courage. You can also connect with today's guests on Twitter at Gantman. The hashtag for today's show is hashtag Film Courage. You can follow the stream on tweetchat.com. Just use the hashtag Film Courage. Uh, number three way is is email, uh, filmcourage at gmail.com. And number four on Skype. Um, the Skype line is completely open today for those you know, if, if we're fortunate, we have some people listening out there listening today yeah. on Christmas Day. Our Skype is open. LA Talk Radio 2. Maybe you can give us a quick call and just say Merry Christmas. Well, yesterday afternoon, Kevin, you were stuck in (laughs) San Antonio, Texas. That's amazing to remember that. that, It was was over. And I I had had been blessed and received help to get from Austin to San Antonio, so my trip was on the way. I was doing the Greyhound. But the IH-10, unbeknownst to me, had been shut down past uh, El Paso because of a storm, a a blizzard. And so, you know, I'll let you speak. But, yeah, the, I had, it was over. I, I was in a Greyhound bus station all night trying to f- click my heels together. And I knew, well, cause I, because I had gotten this far and I know that I'm actually still going because I've already been told that I am in my uh, fantasy brain. And then it was over, and I, I went to the Starbucks real close to, to let you guys know that I had to cancel. Yeah, and, and I saw that tweet. And, and luckily, sometimes I'm not on Twitter, and, and we saw it, and, and then we... We put out a call to action, and and I'm I'm glad you were proactive and you you put that out there. But we we got you here, and and it was an hour by hour thing, and we're yeah yeah we're and glad we're, it happened. And we're just super grateful because we yeah. we saw sort of our Christmas wish, our, our Christmas present, our dream sort of you know it looking like it wasn't going to happen. So yeah. we're we're just super grateful to have you here with us yeah, today. Me Kevin. as well. I mean, it's it's actually uh, mind blowing to me. You know the generosity and spontaneous love that people express you know without warning you know i watched the tweets because it was over and i was that's devastated like i had let you all down because we'd been corresponding off and on and all of a sudden you get this and then but when instead of it being like well it's too bad i started seeing tweets come up hey kelp kevin get to la well what could we do do you think is it possible that is there somebody driving from there or is it then then that was kevin what's your date of birth <laughs> and i was like whoa wait a minute what is someone doing you know so most of you can probably figure out what that could possibly mean, and they, maybe they can tell you. But when somebody asks for your date of birth and it's involving travel, it, it sound, it's starting to sound pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> now, now let, let's, we're, we're going to talk about your beginnings, but you know, we, we kind of want to set things up here. We, we got we to go into this territory. So 
we, we first want to hear about you putting the guitar down. Uh, when when was that, and and how many years until you were able to pick up the guitar again? Um, I got back from Los Angeles in '95, and if you were to talk to me consciously, especially in Austin, Texas, there's tons of us. There's this generations of musicians, and I was still playing, but I wasn't. It literally wasn't until Jay contacted me that many years later, 2007, so I guess we're talking 12 years, when he contacted me, and I didn't know who he was. He had never introduced himself to me back then. But he's wondering where I was because he can't find anything on the Internet. And then it, it turns out, like, man, I haven't been playing. I'm trying to. Something's missing. Something intrinsic in our artistic expression, I guess, is we can't take for granted. It's not quite like we're just talking about, you know, can pass the cream, please. It's not the same, it comes from another place. And that place was gone for, for me for those, all those years. So I was unable to really do anything. Well, how did that feel? I mean, let's, let's, this is, let's take it into, how, how was that time for you, like, emotionally, when you have this talent inside of you and it's not being utilized? It was, it was very, it was confusing. Because I used to take that for granted you know, years when I got out of the military, years like when I was about 26 and I started playing and got to the point to where I was comfortable in front of an audience and I just thought that it was like talking. I was writing these songs and I was around other people that did so we just write songs whenever we want to. And I didn't realize that that, maybe for some people it is depending on what type of music you do, but in my particular case with that real spiritual ingrainedness, it, it, I could feel though no, those aren't, maybe I can get a title, like I, I've got a title that I've been working with since the beginning of that, like called Birth Cry. And that, I know that's, the, that's an album or it's a title or it's a song, I know that. But nothing else, not one you know, syllable since then. And I don't, I, never, I don't understand where that comes from, but this is what I've been working through all these years. It was confusing. And then, I, amazingly, I got over it as well. I started working for UPS and actually got over it, so I became no longer an artist. I was someone that worked at UPS and I ran to compensate. I started running on the track every day to compensate for whatever my, yeah. So I didn't know in this until Jay started asking me questions. I had no idea. That's why all of that stuff's in the documentary. I had no idea that's what was going on. Jay was like a therapist because he was curious and he found out and I did at the same time. It was amazing. It's an amazing process what Jay did with this documentary, what it mm. did for me as an artist. Was he very intuitive with you? Did he kind of just know things about you sometimes that maybe you didn't even know? Was he able to draw different things out of you? Well, he was asking questions, so it had to be based on uh, intuition on at some level because he was genuinely, like for example, the reason why we went to Spain, I'm so glad you asked this question, because Jay had just had a new baby and his wife, Jen, actually Jen had the baby. <laughs> <laughs> Woo, that was close. I'm glad we... Because, you know, <laughs> she deserves credit for that. She really does. <laughs> Mimi's her name. She's a wonderful little girl. But they were very, he was very busy. I think they were uh, shooting, getting ready to shoot Cyrus and had just had a new baby. So he didn't have time to, like, let's get into the Kevin nuance deeply and just dedicate. He came and shot some raw footage asking me questions. Months later, he told me he had a little bit of time. And he's rewinding and listening to me. One of the questions he asked me, they got a flamenco. Flamenco? What's that? Because I don't know. It's not flamenco, but do you study? And then, the, oh my God, Jose Feliciano. When I was Chico and the man, don't be discouraged. I was like, well, that was my whole thing when it was on the TV and I wanted to play guitar like that. And so that's where it and he was like, wow. And then so that led to us going to Spain. So this is all intuition. This whole project was about, about that. Actually, it was 100% intuition because he didn't have time to put it together and produce it. He had to just go with what his gut was telling him. So, mm. so, um, Hope that wasn't long-winded, but you reminded oh, me yeah. it was actually all intuition. This piece, of, this he calls it of art, a, a love, a project of love, a love project, um, a work of art, and it was genuinely love. And I'm amazed at that. Someone that, that had never introduced himself to me remembered my music for 17 years after the fact. And Kevin, you know, during these 12 years where where you know essentially the music died, I mean, did you think that you would ever play the guitar again? You know, was it that far gone from you? Well, I never stopped. That part of my brain that lives on, I never stopped. Because, once again, Austin is a huge music town, so I would see people at the store. Hey, man, what's going on? Oh, yeah, man, I'm working on a new album. I guarantee you if there's people listening, they'll call in. Kevin is working. I'm still working on it. It's the same <laughs> album. Except I have these songs. I've had a breakthrough literally now. 
Mm-hmm. I in my mind, I'm just like this somebody that's like needs some uh, mental patient. What I'm, I'm not working a new album. That, that that's my current reality because I guess in the universe there's no time. So it wasn't 12 years. I'm working on a new album. I'm, that, that's what I'm doing. And then Jay inserts into this, and it's like, so what's going on? Hey, you haven't played. I'm like, oh, I haven't. I really. Oh yeah. Come to think of it, how long has it been? That long? And I'm like, why not then? Come to think of it, why haven't? So he o- opened all of that. Um, put a mirror in front of it and ha- had me look at it. Interesting. Yes. Well, as part of that album that you've been working on now, you have two new songs, right, that you wanted to unveil here. Mm-hmm. Would you like to play one of them now? I'll play a song called Beautiful Vibrations, and the name is derived from two Kickstarter contributors, and they both donated $1,000. Mm. And I wow. needed to give a nickname to them. And beautiful vibrations was one because it's that's something similar to that lyric is embedded in one of my older albums, and the other one is a uh, wild blues singer, which also is somehow embedded in a lyric. And um, I absolutely had to write this song for them because that was the on that level that's what they got. They got a free song that was written based on their inspiration and and then the other goodies, everything else. So I had and Jay's like, hey, we got to get those songs out, and I'm like, well, no, I can't. I tried and it just, there's no way I had to write those songs. So the, the, the necessity of it is what made these songs go. All right. I mean, do you know their names? Is it okay to say their names or, or do they know who they are? They know who they are. They're, they okay. know who they are. Okay. okay. They know who okay. they are. Okay. Just in case. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful vibrations, nation to nation, echo proclamation, all over brave new world, once were limitations, no more such frustration, organic oxygen to breathe everything else we need, and more, our greatest inspiration, way beyond imagination. If you can see what you believe, this is life worth living for. Morphing revelations, uh, rapid transformation, organic oxygen to breathe everything else we need, and more. Beautiful vibrations, uh, nation to nation. Echo proclamation, uh, all over brave new world. Once were limitations, no more such frustration, organic oxygen to breathe everything else we need, and more, our greatest inspiration, way beyond imagination, if you can see what you believe, then this is life worth living for, morphing revelations, rapid transformation, Organic oxygen to breathe everything else we need and more. Morphing revelations, rapid transformation. Organic oxygen to breathe everything else we need and more. Morphing revelations, rapid transformations. Organic oxygen to breathe everything else we need. And more organic oxygen to breathe everything else we need and more organic oxygen to breathe Absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so happy to have the song finished. <laughs>
Beautiful. This is Film Curves. We're live on latalkradio.com and filmcurves.com every Sunday. And we are in studio with world guitar poet and star of Jay Duplass's Kevin, Mr. Kevin Gamp. Right, we got a little taste of that poetry that right there. Yeah, yeah, very beautiful. beautiful. Thank you so much. I yeah, you know, it. just love listening to you play the guitar. Thank you. Yeah, I really just felt sort of in the moment and... and I forgot we were even doing a radio show. <laughs> I'm glad. That, that's only the, that's only the second live performance we've had here, Kevin. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Only oh, the wow. second mm-hmm. live performance in yeah, the studio. The Sandman. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'll have to look the Sandman up, by the way. Now that his name. He, he's the rapping yeah, cowboy. Yeah, I think you'd enjoy his documentary yeah, I, as well. Okay. I, I'll be by Elizabeth Lawrence. To it. Excellent. Do you remember the first time that you picked up the guitar and began playing it? And how did you discover this gift that you have? Um, I had a, a friend. Um, when I was, uh, I would say, um, well, I had Hendrix posters on the wall and everything. And when I, when we moved to Texas, I was nine years old in 1970. When I grew up, I, I, obviously now when I look back, he had just died. But all I know is I was li- flipping channels, and he, he was he was on the news, and they were showing all this footage, and he was burning his guitar, and it was all black and white footage, and they were he being interviewed. And I, at nine, I didn't know he was some he was like a political figure to me. He was this guy, and he was black. And he was cool or something, and he had a guitar. So that was all I, you know. So I, you know. So anyway, to fast forward, by the time I was like thirteen or fourteen, a friend of mine, Gary Stegen, uh, grew up with the piano and the guitar and the trumpet. He was in band in school, and his mom was a piano t- teacher, and so he was required to do these lessons every day, guitar lessons, piano. So we would be playing, and then Gary come in, you know, it's time for. Oh, I got to do my trumpet lesson. And so sometimes I would be in the house with them, and one of his guitar, the guitar guy, I think his name was CJ, was like a god to us, because he was probably 22. And we were like, that man can play the guitar. And so I learned Stairway to Heaven, although I've forgotten it since, because Gary literally would teach me what he was trying to teach him. So that was the beginning for me. Hmm. What kind of feedback, though, were you getting? I mean, people must have been just encouraging you along the way. To, to Back continue. when I was, yeah, no, absolutely not. I, oh, no. I was, I was somebody that couldn't play the guitar, but I was like, I wish I could be like Gary, because he can really play. But I would kind of, he taught me a scale or, or something, and I would like. Uh, so I would just do those all the time. I didn't know anything else, so I would just do those. Uh, scales all the time and that was it it would never dawned on me until I was in the military and I was in my 20s I was like you know what I really want to be able to really play the guitar why do I have to pretend and too bad I'll ever I had a complex or something that meant that I too bad I can't do I never it never dawned on me that well you can really you have five fingers on each hand if you wanted to so it was a real a real slow drip process to actually being you know where I am today so, and and when you got into the guitar, I mean, how many hours would you play the guitar for? Okay, I can't I can't even quantify that because it was just it was like this, per day. Whew, man, it was all day. Now and not only then I was doing this because I was like, my God, get my fingers have to be like did did So come one, one, two, three, four, five. So what you're doing there is you're just holding out your hand yeah, and you're just kind of you're, you're just finger. touching your thumb with each finger yeah, and pretending that I was like Al, I'm like I'm like the Algero of guitar. And he's a, he's amazing, he's a genius. But of course, I will never be able to really do that. But I can pretend, you know. So even when you didn't have a guitar in your hands, you yeah. were still playing mm-hmm. the guitar. Mm-hmm. Is what you're saying? And to kind of qualify that a little bit, there's hundreds of guitarists all over the place, thousands. And you guys, you gals, you relate to what I'm talking about. I don't want it to come off like, wow, look how he did it. He's such an amazing. I think we all do that, you know. You know, all the you know guitar players, are a lot of us, in order to be like Satriani, for example, something like that's going on, mm. you know. So anyway, I'm kind of rambling a little bit, but yeah, like abso- absolutely, absolutely. What was the decision for you, or, or, or how did you come upon the decision to come to L.A. for your music? Um, wow, it's, hard. it's not hard to answer it, but there's so much for me. Back. But the bottom line is, I wrote a song called The Ballad of O.J. Simpson, and it's on CD Baby now on my album, The Capacitor. And the reason why I wrote it is because when... Uh, the worldwide phenomena that was the horrible tragedy and the subsequent trial and the ratings and all of that. In Austin, Texas, people were like honking their horns and asking me where I hid the knife because I looked like OJ. It was a comedy thing and I was like, what? And so long story short, that happened and all of a sudden this light bulb went off 
and I was like, I'm going to write the ballad of O.J. Simpson. This is such an, um, this is an event. Is, there's nothing in us unprecedented in history where all the feeds in the entire world are locked down for six months for a trial. All programming, including talk shows, will not be broadcast because we have to compete with the other networks. We can't not show. Nothing like that has ever happened in like, TV history for, to go ongoing for that month and then this, you know, again and again. So I was like, there has to be a song. I'm the one that shall be the, the, the folk poet. So that's why I came out here. I had an amazing opportunity to come out here based specifically on that. And so I was just kind of skipped to do and come in here not realizing what L.A. is. <laughs> you know, it's very good, but it, it also is very, you have to have your whole thing together out here. And, and, and up to that point, I mean, how, how long had you been performing in Austin? Like, how, how did you feel about your music up to that point, making this decision to then come to L.A.? I thought that I was uh, uh, um, ready for the next step if there's such a thing. I had went from being someone shy who couldn't even play an open mic in front of mm -hmm. you to hosting open mics and showcasing, opening for Jeff Buckley, South by Southwest showcases. So Austin is a type of place to where you kind of, generally speaking, when you get to that level in your mind, that's pretty much it. It's not designed to like, okay, now here's your publishing deal. There's nothing like that generally going on. People can get plucked out of that, but that's the routine there. And so somehow in my mind, it was like, now I must go to New York or L.A. and you actually, you know, sign a record deal. Well, then your life in L.A. at that time hit a brick wall. And, and as you say, and, and you, your music and your dream went away. Can you talk about that time? A little bit I'm sure it's well no to remember. no actually I mean physically there was an incident that happened with uh, one of my cousins and it's in the documentary and basically I got my ass beat and uh, that was on you know when it happened it was like nobody wants that to happen but I had I literally was put on the Greyhound bus in 95 and that's there's so much to the story and I, you know, got back to Austin. And when I got back, there were some friends that, that they know about this because I had like some lumps on me a little bit. And they're like, damn, dude, are you all right? And so then, you know, everything kind of went down and I started working for a call center, you know. So other than, I guess I repressed it. because so I was just living my life and continuing to, to supposedly get ready to play the guitar and start working on another album. But that, there's the, the impasse. That's where it's like, that's where it stayed until uh, Jay emailed me was right there at that point. I didn't realize it. You know, well, I'll go ahead, Karen. Well, what kept you alive during that time? Was it stifling it and sort of just going into the routine of life and not feeling anything? I mean, because a lot of people would have given up and checked out with drugs or alcohol or, mm -hmm. or depression or something else, but so were you able to just kind of stifle it and just go, okay, well, here's my job and I need to be here at 9 o'clock? And, and no, that was pretty much mm -hmm. it. And number, you mentioned the, 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 the substance abuse. Number one, um, it was, you know, I you know, got into that routine of the working. And number two, uh, the quick response is my mom, based on the experiences that we had growing up, my mom totally put the fear of substance abuse in me and to the point to where substance abuse is absolutely not an option for me. Not because I'm so strong that I, I'll just never, you know, drink, but it's just that's just not the profile that's been embedded in me. That's not going to happen. So I think I can thank her. I can you know thank her for that. Yeah. I mean, looking back on it, looking back at it, Kevin. I mean, do you wish that you had gone to maybe Seattle or New York? You know, do you wish you know that you had not come to LA or or, or even possibly stay in Austin? Do you think that would have been a better path for you? Well, I'll, I'll put it to you like this: Every time I come to LA, it uh, metaphorically or physically it just wipes me out because I'm a little puppy or whatever on some level. And you can't be a puppy here. Or if you're going to be a puppy, you need to live where the puppies live in, in L.A. <laughs> Is there a place where the puppies could Malibu. live? Malibu. Is that uh, it? No. I, well, right. it's gentler energy there. But no, I okay. hear you. Believe me, I, I, okay. I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And uh, But I, would, I wouldn't trade it. Well, to, to put it bluntly, there would be no documentary without that experience. And Jay's just asking me questions. And I'm glad you brought this up because he's asking me these questions. And I'm like, I have no idea. Now that it's going to, I'm not Prince. I mean, I don't have the purple rain cool thing going. And so I don't know what, what, I, what, is, what am I going to do? Let me just ask you some questions. So in the middle of all those questions, I said something about L.A. And he said, oh, you were in L.A.? When were you in Los Angeles? 
I was in 90, 95, so what were you doing? He had no idea about it. And then he was like, when did you come back? And then it was like, bam, oh, I need to try to explain to you. My cousin and I got into an altercation <laughs> and all of his friends were there and they became angry as well. <laughs> And he's like, what? You know, so then, you know, this is, he went home saying, I think I have a documentary here. That's when it uh, kind of took, that's when Kevin, the documentary kind of mm. took off. Mm. So I didn't, I had no idea. I wasn't waiting to tell him like, oh, I can't wait to tell him this amazing story. I had repressed it. Mm. When you talked about, you can't be a puppy in LA. And I get what you're saying. Believe me, I, I struggle with it too here. How do you handle that when you're in an environment, maybe it's a festival or being in LA where because you're so open to energy that's around you mm -hmm. and maybe it's not the best energy how do you keep yourself positive so that you don't succumb to the negativity because sometimes it's really easy to just get in that mindset if you're around that environment mm -hmm. and I remember you talked about what you were on in line for a plane and you noticed that everybody's energy was weird and then you're like oh that's right they're going to LA yeah that's I was I was coming <laughs> back from the, t the Tacoma the film festival in Tacoma mm -hmm. and uh, everything I had been to, I was in, um, I think, New Hampshire before that, if I'm getting my timeline right. And then I was in Canada for 10 days, which is another story. And then I was in Tacoma. So everything was, that was just normal. Then all of a sudden, I was at the terminal, the gate to go to L.A. And something was going on. And I didn't even consciously. And I was like, what? The, is he looking at me? And then, and, then, and then I was like, oh, these people are all going to Los Angeles. Right, right. And then I had to put on that whatever. I don't know if that's real for everybody, but for me, it's it's something that I still haven't complete. I'm moving in that direction because I think it's also very important because we have to be who we are everywhere. This is planet Earth, and we're available to be part of it too. So we can't just because somebody has a a sneeze when you enter the room, you can't let that just destroy your artistic <laughs> endeavors. So um, it's, it's, it's I think it's good for me. It's good for all of us. It's a galvanizing. Now at some point, you can go over the edge, and you have to know when that is, but. Mm -hmm. So what is it that you do to sort of protect yourself from that, especially if you have to play and you want to remain true to your music and who you are? How do you how do you keep that out or do you not? You just I, I don't I don't know if, if it's if it's um, I think it would be more important from my perspective to deal with it. You know, L.A., I understand now being here. Why um, it, the, the slogan, like, handle, handle your business, handle your business. It's not like, well, that's a cool saying. I think I'll remember that one and pass it along. It's no, because you have to handle your business out here. You really do. You have to handle your business everywhere. But if you don't, then you can kind of mediocre around and then you'll be okay not realizing that you didn't handle your business. Mm -hmm. But here, if you don't handle your business, you're going to know real quick if there's something that you're in the midst of doing in an environment where a lot of people are doing the same thing. If you're not handling your business, and there's no guarantee you if you handle your business that it's going to happen the way you intended. So... Um, it's good for me to understand what that means for me personally as an artist and what is it that I need to do, whether I stay here, whether I go back to Austin, or whether I commute back and forth, or, mm -hmm. you know, all points in between. You know, Kevin, most people do not get a second chance. The universe found a way, you know, to put the guitar back in your hands. You know, what, what can you say about that? You know, what, you know, you know, here, here you are back in the position, and it's great opening the show, and, and, and you're playing the guitar, and you're, and you're performing. Um, you're you're back in front of people on stage. First thing that pops into my mind is when I first did open mics at Chicago House, I used to cancel them because you'd have to get a slot. And then I was, oh, wow, I'm not ready. And so slowly but surely, I did the thing to where, damn it, I'm a grown man. I will do this open mic. I was scared to death. So I did the first open mic. And not too long after that, Jay Duplass saw me performing. So the genesis for this happened right there and then, and I didn't know it because he didn't come up to me and shake my hand. He was a he was a student at UT. Mm -hmm. He wasn't even it gra hadn't graduated yet, and his brother was visiting from New York, if I remember the story right. And they opened the door and heard me do half a song. So that's when it had happened right there. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what faith means on some level, because you don't know what's already being lined up for you, and it can take. Yeah, wow, that's it can really take, amazing. Though, that, that is isn't that phenomenal? That's mm -hmm. what really is going on here. Wow. At any given point, I could have. I could have consciously told the universe, and I'm almost concerned to even say that just in a, for an example, because mm -hmm. there's no such things as examples in the universe. But I could have stopped mm -hmm. back then, and I actually did stop. Mm -hmm. But before I stopped, I had planted those seeds, and I, I'd never contradicted those seeds verbally. 
So those seeds still grew, just like something grows underground and it comes up and turns into a redwood. That's exactly what happened. And it's fascinating to me wow. that it can, it's a, it's, a, it's a clear example of what, go, what we have the potential to do in our lives. Wow, I mean, what a story. It is. You know, because wow. at the same time, you could have not performed, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so those seeds that grew mm -hmm. and, and took 17 years to, to really, you know, be that full-blown tree or, you know, whatever you want to call it, you know, like, yeah, it, it, it could have gone, in the t you know, it could have never manifested. No, 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 it, and no it, one would have ever it. known. No one would have ever known. And it, it came down to one individual. Mm -hmm. That's it. We are in studio with Kevin Gant. I heard uh, Andy Timner speak. I hope I'm saying her name right, too. Yeah, you, you are. Uh, okay, you are. good. I hope so. And she was talking about Dig, and, and I don't know if you've seen that documentary, but she was saying that the music industry is almost like the mafia, the, some of the record companies. How has the music game changed? The um, 90s or mid 90s, you were in the game, and mm -hmm. now? Well, uh, I have a worldwide distribution deal right now. Now, if I said that back in what, 90, whenever it was, that would be like, wow, congratulations. And it still is congratulations because we have the freedom, but somebody from Japan bought my CD for, and I get $6 out of that. That's a worldwide distribution deal. So it's up now, it's like, okay, do people want to buy your product or do they, are they inspired by you? So it all comes down now to the relationship with uh, a worldwide audience. And uh, we're, there's still a, t a uh, learning curve for us to realize that. I don't know whether this is always wrong, but I think a lot of people still think that something's going to happen and then they need to somebody to discover them and then they get a deal. It's like, no, you have a worldwide distribution deal right now. And if you don't, you can go to CD Baby. Uh, dot com and have a worldwide distribution deal in 30 minutes you can just kind of click on the agreement and upload your songs and you can cancel the agreement whenever you want to <laughs> that's how it's changed it's amazing right so it's much easier now with yeah. youtube and everything to just be you can do whatever you want now now the question is do, do you really have something that's you know that you have a fan base for or, or you know you know, oftentimes, you just mentioned this a moment ago. I mean, oftentimes, it just takes one person to believe in you, to, to believe in your talent. Um, and, and having that right person champion your work can just make all the difference um, in, in any person's life. How, how much has Jay Duplass and his Kickstarter campaign um, meant to you? It's just changed my life. It really is. Uh, well, to, to, in one respect... Um, if I, if I, it wasn't my Kickstarter campaign, it was Jay's Kickstarter campaign for the documentary and to help for, for like festivals and what, and you know, editing. Mm -hmm. If I had, my name's Kevin and I'm trying to raise money, I would not have, um, I probably wouldn't have reached that goal or come close to it. Mm -hmm. And so he's instrumental in that, number one. And number two, I haven't been able to thank him yet because he won't allow it. He literally is saying, Kevin, thank you so much. For agreeing to, because uh, he, he wanted to do a, a piece of art that was his and he didn't have to you know it was like it wasn't a corporate or, or the or the picture business thing that which means you know I don't completely understand that but those of you out here that are involved in that know what it means the artistic you know struggles to try to do things the way you want when it's being funded by you know large entities mm -hmm. and he's like not this this is my documentary and so he was very thankful, and to this day he tells me all the time he's thankful, literally. It started dawning on me, like, wow, he's not just being polite. He's really thankful. So, you know, he's trumping my thanks to him. Mm. He, he really did. It's, that's what's amazing to me as well. I mean, as you say that, uh, it's, it's like we're hearing the other side of the story. Because, you know, Karen and I, have, we had the privilege to talk to Jay. We did sort of a video Skype with him um, around the time that the Kickstarter campaign um, was going. And, and we kind of talked to him a little bit about the campaign. And we got to hear him speak about you. So th this is great, mm -hmm. you know, you know, flipping it around and hearing yeah. your side of the story. So that was just kind of running through my mind as, yeah. I, as I'm listening to you talk yeah. about Jay. And it's, it's, it's really it's amazing to me that that's where his heart genuinely is about mm -hmm. me when he heard me do half a song in 1993. And that it never went away for him. That's fascinating. I'm so thankful. I've made it if there's such a thing. This is it. You'll be, I'm on the show now, Film Courage, because of that. And no matter what happens tomorrow, this is it for me. Mm. And I'm so thankful for that. You know, let's talk about life since May. You know, since the Kickstarter campaign, 
how many places have you been able to travel to and and you know because th- this is this whole thing has been sort of what Jay was envisioning was sort of a comeback tour for you you know to 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 put you in a position where people could see this film and where you could get up on stage and perform and and and, and share your music with folks. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, we premiered at South by Southwest and. Um, then everything, the floodgates just opened, and I was, I guess, car- carbon copied on all the stuff. Jay, uh, Jay's assistant, Jeff Mann, and Josh Poland were instrumental in organizing the calendar and keeping me up updated. So basically, by the time it got down to me, they were letting me know, okay, flight arrangements are getting ready to be made, and these festivals will be, be contacting you directly by email. So I, I know I did, uh, I'm, I'm thinking 30 festivals wow. from uh, March through um and that did napa valley was my last festival for the year i I can't even describe when when i got to the hotel in napa valley and i looked at the room i emailed them jay duplass uh jeff mann and josh poland and you do you guys remember that old calgon commercial yeah take me away (laughs) i found because you know how everything's on youtube i was like i was like i hope that's because that's the flash i got Uh i was like guys you would not believe the hotel is in like personally my finances are none just so you guys know the kickstarter and jay um was very you know managed those funds that kickstarter money has nothing to do with like kevin's candy money or Six Flags money, or going to SeaWorld. That has nothing to do with that. It's specifically for, and what may happen next year. There's five festivals so far next year. Oh. And so personally, my finances were done, but I'm getting shuffled all over the country in these places. This The place was, I said, I sent them the link. I said something like, blah, blah, blah. Calgon, take me away. <laughs> and then, then when you go to, go to YouTube, you look at it, it's like there's a woman, Calgon. Because that's oh, where wow. I was living. There's a fireplace there, and the bed was all, it's just, it was an, I stayed, I stayed there five days. Mm-hmm. So, that goes. That story goes on and on, with diff- all the different locations. A lot of those hotels or all the arrangements that I stayed in were just, just phenomenal. If you get discouraged or you feel like giving up, what's the conversation in your head that stops you? I process it at the time, and it may not be a specific mantra, but I know better than that. You know, unless it's time for me to leave this plane, and then that's not a bad thing either. In you know in. Um, you know, based on, you know, what we're all eventually going to, you know, move on. So that what's, that's the worst. And people have been, my, and matter of fact, people have been through much worse than whatever my little artistic, my life revolves around this dream, for better or worse. And it's a guitar and it's singing. There's people that don't even have the opportunity to be free to do anything and they never for generations. So the fact that I'm even speaking about it, it's it's a blessing. So those kind of you know, circling around in my brain brings me out of that. Mm. You know, yeah, that pretty much is the is the answer for that. Sometimes it may take all night because mm-hmm. I've had some like some patches here, like in the last couple of months. But if it takes all night, it did, and I come out of it being refreshed and you know affirmed once again. You know, Kevin, I just wanted to see if we, you know, because w- when you meet for those listening, when you meet Kevin Gann in person, you know that there's this just this presence that you have. You know, not not everyone that you meet is as present and in the moment as as you are and so i would just love to hear you speak on on being present and and you know and also i would love to hear you know you have this ability you know because like we said at the top of the show you were you were kind of stranded in san antonio and yet here you are in studio today you have like this thing where you're going to sort of rely on the universe and you're going to rely on the goodness of people and we'd just love to hear you talk about that a little bit. I, I'm so thankful. It's over and over again. And I think years ago, I'm trying to get this in real time because you deserve the answer. But I'm remembering things as you ask the question. I can mm-hmm. remember at one point towards like in the early 95, and I'm trying to remember the one name. Who he was in a band. He was in the Gourds. It was Kevin Russell. And who he's a doctor. Maybe I'll remember his name in a minute because he wasn't a doctor then. Mm-hmm. He's an amazing guitar player. Now he's a doctor. But at that time, I used to host open mics. And uh, one time they saw me by UT, and I was walking around, and they gave me a coat. <laughs> and so, man, I need to remember his name. But this is one of many examples. At one point, maybe, maybe that next spring, I was talking to somebody about this. We were sitting in Chicago House, Peg, Peg and, uh, and Glenda's Club. 
and everything that I had literally because I tried to find something to break that circle everything that I had my shoes my socks my pants my belt my shirt the guitar everything that I had was something that someone had given me mm. in that community and it just so you know it naturally occurs now translating that into what would happen when you're trying to do something in LA wow that's a whole nother animal but you're making me realize that that's exactly what I'm doing I'm not aware of it it's just that in the moment there's going to be like a flow chart there's some decisions and you're like sometimes you have oh that's a hard one but no this is the this is the decision because if this doesn't happen at least I'll be that's where I'm at I think we all do that but for some reason I'm doing it this my aura that's it that's not taking into account where 10 years from now you can have an IRA you know I don't go that far (laughs) And that's not always a good thing. I wouldn't suggest it, but that's just the only way I know how to do it. And um, thanks for for recognizing that because I am doing that. I could have easily, my heart was hurt. My heart was, I can't say broken because of what we talked about before. You know, there's a lot of things going on in the world. So I can't say my heart was broken because I can't do the radio interview. It hurt really bad though that I had to email you guys and cancel the day before. Because I was in Texas and there was a snowstorm and I-10 had been shut down and there was no way it was going to happen. But for some reason, my foundation has been laid through all of these experiences and that's where faith is. You have faith based on your past experiences. We could talk for two more hours about amazing things that happened that shouldn't have happened based on me just standing there. You do all you can do and then you just stand. And I just stand. It's like, well, just stand. That's all you can do. So instead of laying down and curling up in a ball, stand and if the fireball engulfs you you were there standing when it did and so so far a fireball hasn't engulfed me <laughs> and you met a young man too while you were there who just had a very tragic thing happen oh in the bus at the bus and, station and you were able to say you know what and you were able to you're right to, to feel for him and say thank you yeah there is I don't know if anybody here um, is in Texas now listening to this but I have no idea I don't know any of these people at all but I had a rough night at the Greyhound station when I knew that we were frozen and I wasn't going anywhere not because of San Antonio but because of Del Rio you know I can't get, couldn't get past Del Rio so Greyhound wasn't moving so I was sleeping on the floor all night and then just moping around but trying to keep a you know, normal effect and I overheard a conversation and to the gist of it where there was a man at the Greyhound that was waiting for his friend to come in. And I heard him tell somebody, yeah, my friend, I've known him since we were kids. He just lost his entire family. They were coming to pick him up at UT for the holidays. He lost his mom, his dad, his brother, and his sister. And that had just happened. So his friend said, why don't you just come and stay with us for the holidays? And so that completely put the film Courage interview just somewhere else, folded it up and put it back in my wallet. How, how can I complain? You know, there's nothing I could do but just like, I went and talked to him about, man, you're doing a wonderful thing for your friend, God bless you, and I just, you know, hope the best for, I don't even know how you would process that. The young man is a UT student and he's 22 years old. And by the way, if any of you all know this, if you know him because you go to UT, support him. You know, don't be afraid to come up to him because it was such a tragedy, just hug him or whatever it takes. Because that's a, a, a big whammy, it's about as bad as it gets. Mm-hmm. So anyway, that, these different things come in your life that allow you to process things in real time and keep your perspective honest. Yeah, no, it's such a tragedy. You know, yeah, our, really hearts, our hearts go out. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's just got to be just mm-hmm. so painful. Doesn't that change your perspective? It does, yeah, and it puts in perspective mm-hmm. trivial things that one might obsess over. Yeah, and that's what I was doing. Like and it, yeah. it, changed, it changed my perspective. So I went to um, Starbucks. Because the, the, there was no Wi-Fi at the Greyhound. I, there was one a couple of blocks away, and I went ahead. Well, based on that, okay, I'm just going to cancel. And so I canceled with you guys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, we, we have just a few minutes left, and you do us the honor of another song. Sure. Please. Soul forever lingers, hovering mysteriously, so as not to be ignored. Wild blue singer, soul forever lingers, hovering mysteriously, 
so it's not to be ignored. You can ignore me if you want to. I'm not gonna ignore you because you mean it to me. I know what you're going through. I know everything. I was already here in the beginning, wailing on your behalf, making you cry and laugh, sometimes leaving you dangling. In between, life and what you're trying to do, please be sure to always include me in on everything so that I don't have to intervene. Wild blue singer, soul forever lingers, uh, hovering mysteriously so as not to be ignored. You can ignore me if you want to. I'm not going to ignore you because you mean everything to me. I know what you're going through. I know everything. I was already here in the beginning. Wild blue singer, yeah. Soul forever lingers, yeah. Hovering mysteriously, so as not to be ignored, yeah. Wild blue singer, yeah. Soul forever lingers, hovering mysteriously. Love that one. Thank you so much. We've been speaking with world guitar poet and star of Jay Duplass's doc, Kevin. Buy his music on cdbaby.com and search Kevin Gant. Connect with Kevin on Twitter, at Gantman, and go to the Kickstarter page uh, for their successful crowdfunding campaign. And thanks so much, Kevin. Thank you, Karen. Thank and David. you. I appreciate this you. Beautiful. Happy yeah. holidays, everyone. Yeah. Yeah, we couldn't think of a, a better Christmas amazing. present. So we're, we're just super thrilled to have you here as our holiday gift for everybody you know and, and we're a little bit over we got to get our guy Jim Norris yes in, we in, love Jim in, get, him, get him ready in studio so shout out to you Jim Merry, Merry Christmas to you Merry Christmas he's, he he's coming so nicely dressed yeah he always has a suit on he's mm -hmm. coming next with Sapphire Planet so we want to nice. we want to be able to transition to him um, and I guess we should just thank each of you for joining us and making us a part of your 2011 yes, and we're you. just super grateful so we're just wishing we're wishing you the, the happiest of holidays. Yeah. And, um, yeah, thank you all for all your support. Yeah. It's been great. And until 2012. Well, yeah, until 2012. And, and we look forward to being here with you next Sunday first um, at noon at LA Talk Radio. We're yeah. going to be joined by filmmaker Jake Stetler. Um, he's a longtime Film Courage listener. Um, he won our movie poster puzzle contest. Jake is in post-production on his feature, No Sanctuary. And we can't Excited wait to, to um, kick off. No um next week with you jake ne next year with you jake yeah and have a safe new year's everyone